the book of Psalm. The book of Psalms. And I want Psalm. Let me get my glasses on. 66. Psalm 66. It's so quiet now. That's okay. My message is entitled this morning, I Will Testify of My Great God. My brothers and sisters in Christ who are joining us now, we love you and thank you that you are joining us. We can't wait to see you back here. Many of you uh, still can't get out or maybe a little bit frightened with the COVID. Uh, we can't wait to have you all back again. Amen. And for those who are uh, visiting us from other parts of the nation, thank you for being here. We love you and uh, hope to see you all soon. In the book of Psalm 66, I want to start reading in verse 16. Listen to this. Come in here. Now, what, what kind of word can you start with that? Come in here, folks. I'm telling you, I'm coming down today. Yeah, it's been too long. And you see, I'm, I'm ready. He says, come in here. What kind of word can you put on that? Something that, that we are very active with around here. It's evangelism. Amen? We evangelize. We're to evangelize the world. And, and right here, he, the, he starts off saying, come in here. Listen to me. I'm going to be evangelizing here. All ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me, he hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. O oh Lord God, we do praise you today. Be with services today that your word will uh, 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 be able to go out with freedom and, and that folks will receive the word, the word, your word, with much graciousness. I pray for those who are here today without Jesus Christ. I pray that the Holy Spirit will be so great upon their, on their soul that, that today it will cause them to walk the aisle and accept Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior. Lord, let it be an upliftment to us as the children, your children, to excite us into loving you and showing our love to you and for you to others. Defeat the devil in this hour, and Lord, I pray that your name will be raised above all. In Christ's name we pray and ask these things. Amen. You may be seated. The psalmist is excited about, the, about God's faithfulness and loving care. Now listen, folks. God has always been faithful. He's been faithful in the good days, and we give Him praise. But, you know, all of us go through bad days. But I want you to know, God is faithful in those bad days. He wants you to understand His greatness and His mightiness. And my friend, there's no limit to His greatness nor His mightiness. Oh, He is a wonderful God. Uh, uh, but also, he wants everyone to stop what they're doing and, and take, take a, a notes on how he has blessed. Sometimes we're running so fast for the Lord and we're, we're moving so at a fast speed that sometimes we, we just need to not stop working, okay? You say, preacher, I've stopped working. Well, how long have you stopped working for? Oh, about 30 years. No, 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 that's not... <laughs> But we, we need to take time as we're doing His work to understand the greatness of our God. And we, again, do have a great God. You know, uh, uh, the psalmist said right here, I want you to, to look what God has done for my life. All that He's done for my soul. You know, He removed the guilt of sin. My friends today, listen. If you have not had a personal experience with Jesus Christ, today is the day for that personal experience. Today is the day to let Jesus come into your heart. Today is the day to understand I stand before God, a great and awful sinner. And I need a Savior because if I do not... Uh, if I do leave this life without Jesus Christ, if I do not have Christ, 
The place I'm bound for is hell and the lake of fire. You say, well, we don't want people to understand that. No, the devil doesn't want people to understand that. God wants people to understand that because he has a home in heaven. Like hell's not the final destination, the lake of fire is. Heaven's not the final destination. Isn't that right? The new heaven and the new earth is the final destination. Where it goes to extremely awful, it goes to extremely good for those who know Jesus. And so I encourage those here today that haven't realized, or maybe you've realized that you're a great sinner. I encourage you today, if you've never asked Jesus with, with childlike faith, say, what's childlike faith? You can put a child up on a high place and say, jump to me. You know what? Those crazy kids will do it. Isn't that right? Yeah, they'll do it. It's when we get older, we don't trust anybody. <laughs> but childlike faith. I, I, I do believe Jesus died for me, because he did. I do believe if, if I confess my sins and, and repent of my sins that he will save me, and he will. You need to be doing this today. You need Jesus as your Savior. You say, you can't know if you're saved or not. That's another lie from Satan himself. The Bible tells us we can know because God gives us everlasting life. Isn't that right? My basic scripture, the Bible in a nutshell, John 3, 16. Isn't that right? How about John chapter 10? I give unto them eternal life, and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which is greater than all, no man is able to pluck them out of the Father's hand. Isn't that right? How about Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30? Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, wherein you are sealed unto the day of redemption. How in the world do you get lost when Jesus saves you? You don't, but you got to get saved. You got to get saved. And the psalmist knew that, hey, he took away my guilt of sin. He gave me a new life. He gave me a new hope. He gave me a new way. And he, he brought peace and joy to my soul. And he gave me heaven. Oh, man, I tell you what, it's exciting to think about heaven. We've had it the last couple of weeks that we've had. Amen. I tell you what, it's been miserable, but God gives us heaven. It's natural. It's a natural thing for a convert. How many are saved here today? Yeah. You're a convert. It is natural for a convert to want to call upon others to hear them what they have to say, what God has done for them. You get somebody that just accepted Jesus Christ as, our, as their personal Savior, and it's like the old song. Let the whole world know who's on God's side. Amen. And when you get saved, you just want the whole world to, to uh, uh, listen to you. Listen to me. I got saved. Jesus came into my heart. I got a home in heaven prepared for me. You see, this is what, what uh, this psalmist is doing. And we that raised our hands that we belong to God, we're converts for God. We ought to have this same excitement and this same uh, desire to tell others. Amen. Let's look at uh, the praise he did for him. He says, I cried unto him with my mouth. And in verse 17, I cried unto him with my mouth. He says, in my distress, I could do nothing except cry out for help. I had to cry out for help. Have you ever been so low? Now, this is, this is low. When you have to crawl up on a stepladder to scratch the belly of a snake. Now, that's pretty low, isn't it? Have you ever had a real low time in your life? Man, you think, man, nothing good's happening. Nothing good can come out of this. And have you ever felt utterly hopeless? Come on. Has anybody experienced that except for me? Come on. Has anybody? Okay. I thought both, all of you. Sure. It's going to be like dragging a dead dog today. I'll tell you right now. And you say, what do you do? You cry out. Who do you cry out to? Well, there's only one who can really bring you out of the, out of the, of the depths of despair. And that's our God. Amen. Today I see more commercials about depression. If you're depressed, don't do yourself harm. Amen. 
I'm telling you, that is not the answer. God is the answer. He is the answer. You say, preacher, I'm so distraught. I'm so depressed. Hey, when you get that way, you get as close as you can to your God. And I'll tell you what, he gives you hope. He gives you peace. And he'll give you resolve for your depression. Amen. He'll do that. Because my God is almighty. My God is all-knowing. And he can bring the, the, the lowest person back up. And he can give them hope. And he can give them guidance to, to the right path again. And, and this is what he said. He says, I was in distress. And I didn't holler for a family member. And I didn't holler for this person, that person. He says, I cried out to God. Because God is all-powerful. There is no remedy for myself. There is no hope for myself. This is what he's saying. There doesn't even seem a rescue for myself. He looked at his life and he says, I don't see any prosperous end for where I'm going. That's why he called out to God. I'm telling you, God has a way out. I've seen so many cars stuck. And I'm one of those kind of guys. If you'll go down Maple Street and you'll look real close to the, to the curb, you'll see one set of tracks about yay wide. You know who that is? I like going through the, through the piles of snow. I do. I'm going, I tell you, I say, what well, if you get stuck? I'm going to call for help. <laughs> Amen. And I'll stay in the truck and whoever's around, I'll have to push out. Isn't that right? But you know what? He didn't see any way out. He didn't see any hope. He didn't see any, he didn't see any prosperous end. He didn't see a remedy in himself. And my friends, it's because God has a remedy. Like I said, I've seen so many people stuck and, and cars uh, stranded and everything. They got stuck. Undoubtedly, they are by themselves because the cars are still there. But there is help. There is help. And God is the one who helps. And he says, in my distress, I called out to my God. And I extolled him with my mouth. He says, when I was down as low as I could get, he says, I highly praised my God. My friends, this is the answer. We look up to heaven when most people are going through trials and tribulations and heartaches, you know where they look? They look down. I can tell by people if they're having a hard day or not because what they do is they walk around like this. How many's ever walked around like that? Now, come on. You say, boy, you're having me raise my hand a lot. I don't want you to go to sleep. <laughs> but you ever, you ever get so burned down that you walk like this? And it doesn't help you, does it? But I tell you what, if you start walking like this, looking up to God, Amen. He's the one that is the answer. He's the one that can bring you life. He's the one that can, that can uh, uh, bring you hope and peace. And only He can do it to the, to the degree that it needs to be done. It's called completely. Amen. Amen. And so he's, I'll, spray, I'll praise Him. Why are we going to praise Him? Because He's supreme. I'm going to tell Him I am do totally dependent upon you, God. My friends, when things are go going just as perfect as they can be going for you, you're still totally dependent upon God. Amen. And when we, when we go through our times of, of struggles and, and heartaches, I'm telling you, you are totally dependent upon God. Oh, you say, well, I'm as independent as a hog on ice. I want to tell you something, my folks. Never get that independent. Always dependent upon God. He says in this next verse of 18, He says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, if I regard iniquity in my heart, this means in my heart. What is, what is my heart condition? You know, this is February and 
and, and, it's, and we haven't had it yet. Next Sunday is the last Sunday. And even for an opening Sunday, can the choir sing? How about your heart? Is it right with God? Uh -huh. That's the thing that counts today. Is it black by sin? Is it pure within? Hey, that's a good song, isn't it? Randy's looking around at everybody. Okay, you guys know that song? I know it, but we haven't had, I know, I know. We usually start out the month of February with it and end the February. We're going to end with it, unless we're in heaven. Amen. Amen. But how about your heart? If I regard iniquity in my heart, what is, what is happening inside my heart? He's not talking about the heart that pumps blood. He's talking about you, the, your soul. We all know Bill by his body. We know what he looks like. We know what he sounds like and everything. The real Bill is his soul. It's going to continue on one or two places. His is going to be heaven. Amen. It's not because he's a good guy, because he is. But it's because he's had a personal experience with Christ Jesus. But, but you say, well, that's Bill. Well, yeah, that is Bill, but Bill is his soul. It's his soul. It's, it's what God saves. It's, it's what we give up to our God. We've been bought with a price. We've been, we've been liberated from, from uh, uh, the clutch of death of, of Satan and hell and the lake of fire. We've been redeemed. Amen. He says, now if I regard iniquity in my heart, the depths of my soul... That's why the Bible tells us that, that we need to look at our lives daily and sometimes even by the minutes. Where do I stand before God? How do I present myself before God? Is my life, is it in the same, same presence of God? Or do I have my, my soul uh, desiring things that are they're, that are not of God, that's not pleasing to God. Oh, if I regard iniquity in my heart, what is the intent of my heart? Am I sincere in my life? Do I have another purpose in mind? If I, if I have sin in my heart, do I purpose to do it again and again and again? You see, this is, this is saying, if I have intent, iniquity in my life. What's the end result about it? If I, have a, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he says the Lord will not hear me. He will not hear me. Oh, he didn't want that. He says he won't have any regard to my prayer. He, he'll know the true purpose of my heart and he will not answer my prayer. We do the same thing today as parents. We really do. Your child's been bad. And they say, Mom and Dad, I want this. No. Well, why can't I have it? Well, my first answer is because <laughs> I said so. But if you're a parent that likes to explain everything to your kids, which I don't have any problem with that, well, you've been a rotten little rat. You've been fussy and fighting and you've been back talking. Amen? You haven't been pleasant to be around? The dad says, you're taking after your mother? I'm tired of it? I went there first. The mother says, you're taking after your dad, and I'm sick of it. Isn't that right? And in all reality, they take after mom and dad. Isn't that right? No! You're not going to get it. Quit asking. Well, I promise to be better. You be better for a while and we'll see how that is. Because, you know, they want to just keep doing what they're doing and getting what they want. God, he looks down to the depths of our souls and he says, no. Nah. No. Nah. He says he won't even hear me. Because God wants that good fellowship between your soul and himself. 
He wants your life in such a way that as you say you are, it needs to be that way. It's not a false facade, but it's something beautiful, a beautiful relationship with your God. I'm telling you what, that's the best relationship you can have in your life. It's not with a friend. It's not with your wife and husband. And not, you want all those relationships to work. You have a great relationship between you and your God. He says, no, he won't hear me. You know, there's scriptures to prove this in the Bible. It really is. Uh, uh, the, Bible, the Bible talks about this, and, and uh, he, he warns. He does warn of it. In the book of Psalms, chapter 18, would you join me? Psalms, chapter 18. And, and I, I want to start reading verse 36. And the psalmist said this in Psalm Chapter 18, he says, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. Again, Psalm 18. I'm, I just finished 38. He says, For thou hast girded me with strength unto battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemy that I might destroy them that hate me. They cry, but there is none to save them, even unto the Lord when they cried unto the Lord. But he answered them not. Why? Because their soul was against God. Their life was against God's leadership. In the book of Psalm 34, 15. Psalm 34, 15. It tells us that, that the uh, eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and His ears are open unto their prayer. You see, God listens to the righteousness. But over in 1 Peter chapter 3, He tells us something so much different. He says, yes, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto the prayer, but the Lord is against them that do wickedness, that do evil, that do wrong. He will not attend to their prayers. My friends, that's something we all need as Christians is a prayer life that touches the ears of our God. And it will cause an action to happen where those things he hears, he will perform. The psalmist says, he gave me victories over my enemies. He gave me victory. That's like Brother Butch that we read uh, his letter this morning in Sunday school. They're trying to destroy him in this church. They're trying to run him out of town. And in the midst of doing something, he got a better meeting hall. People are getting saved. Visitors are still coming. Amen. And lives are still being changed. The Bible tells us over in the book of Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Listen to these words. I want to start reading in verse 24. Proverbs chapter 1. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have said it not all my counsel... And with none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when you fear when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall you call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early. But they shall not find me. You say, that's not a fair God. No, that is a fair God. Amen. You don't lose your salvation, but my friends, you lose your fellowship. You lose your fellowship. And oh, boy, you can go out and play in sin. Oh, yeah. You can keep going and going and doing and doing. You can keep rebelling against God. But one of these days, you're going to find yourself... Down. I was going to say face down on the ground, but I think you're going to find yourself down and the only place you can look is up. Amen. And you're going to say, oh God, protect me. Oh God, save me. He says, I won't even listen to you. 
Why? Because the soul is not right with him. God will let you go as far as you want to go. But remember, as far as you go away from his presence is the same distance you have to come back. Amen. You thought the travel away from God was so fun. It was so, you think it was such a thrill. I tell you what, you walk back the same steps and all the time you're going to be seeing it. It's not as fun as what it looked like when he's walking away from him. We had a dog. His name was Francois Pierre. He was my mother's dog. She didn't want him, but we wanted her to have it. He's a teacup poodle. Him and his brothers and sisters was in a birdcage when we found him. Little. And my dad says, let's get your mama a poodle. We, they got him all cleaned up, that little rascal. He's small. I mean, he's small. And we called him Franny. And Franny loved Mama. And Mama loved Franny. And we stood before her on the porch. And we had a, we had a, 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 a Christmas sock. And we tried putting him into it. And he went clear down to the foot. And we had to shake him out. <laughs> and so what we did is we, we stuffed that thing full of, I don't know, everything. And here's Randy holding the thing. And, and uh, Franny... Francois Pierre. And here, I mean, we're sitting out there, standing out there, and she comes to the door, and we sing something about wish you a Merry Christmas or something like that. I don't remember what we sang to her. I think we wish you a Merry Christmas. She opened the door, we started singing to her, and she said no and walked back in the house. <laughs> no, no. no, yeah, she didn't say no once. She said no a lot. His whole life she was saying no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Here's a story I'm making about that thing. That, that thing was, it was, I don't know, he's a good dog. He's small. But at the same time, we had an English bulldog. And his name was Bolivar Sockwad. And I don't know how we got Bolivar Sockwad. I think uh, there was a German man that called dad Bolivar Sockwad growing up. Well, Bolivar Sockwad, he wasn't small. He was big. And the dog was a good dog. But the dog could fight. And so at nighttime, they'd go out and they'd walk the neighborhood, you know. It, it, it's just like, you know. <laughs> and Franny, bless his heart, he'd go start a fight with the dog. And that bulldog, he'd go run and run. And that bulldog would sit there and fight that dog's battles. Well, something bad happened. Old Bolivar went through his ages and stuff, and he's a fun dog. He crawled up into our attic, and it was a terrible time trying to get him out. I mean, he'd throw blankets over his head, carry him out and everything. He'd climb up slides and go down the slides. He'd go on the merry-go-round. You spin the merry-go-round this way, he'd be running this way, and he'd just be in one place the whole time. But he, he, he fought. I mean, he, he fought. Well, old Bolivar had a heart attack and he died. That's what we said. Oh, Ball died. Bolivar Sockwad. We cried a lot, didn't we? I don't know how in the world you can fall in love with a dumb animal like that and it affects you so much. But I was at college one time, and I came in Friday. Nobody was at the house. And old Franny came out to see me, and I bent down to pick him up, and he yiped, and I put him down, scared me. Went underneath the bed. You know, used to go out and start fights, and he thought, boy, that was fun. But now, old Bolivar's not with him. Went out and started this, fun, this fight, and it wasn't fun. The walk home was a little rough. And I'm telling you something. When you walk with the Lord, fights are going to come, but you got the Lord to do the fight. But when you walk purposely away from God and His righteousness, His holiness, His purity, I'm telling you what, that walk home one of these days is not going to be fun. No more. Amen. Right. You say, well, I've got it under control. Yeah. How many millions of times have we heard that? 
you don't have it under control. Because when you think you're in control, you look up, God's in control. I'm telling you. And my friends, we've got something to tell a world that's out of control. He said all these things. He says, but we see in, in this verse that he says that all my prayers were acceptable to God. He, he understands the, the, my purpose is to forsake all sin. And now I come to him in prayer. Because the next verse he says, God has heard me. Back over in the book of Psalms. He says this. But verily God hath heard me. He looked down into my soul and determined my true intentions. He has accepted me. And let me tell you something. God will accept everyone that will come to him, both lost and saved alike. You say, preacher, my life is so screwed up, God would never save me. No, he'll save you. Oh, I'm such a mess right now. God will never save me. Oh, no. He'll save you. He'll save you right now. Well, if I could just get my life back in order. My friends, you're not going to get it in order until God takes control. You've got to give your life to God. Christians walk away from the Lord, and it's the worst testimony in front of the lost. Well, I'm saved. You're saved. Yeah, I belong to God. And you live like you live? Come on now. Come on, you're faking it. Nah. Because I know how it is in my life. When I walk away from the Lord, the Holy Spirit, He just slaps me to sleep. <laughs> Have you ever felt so guilty because of your life? And think, man, what am, I, what, was I, what am I thinking? What am I doing? You say, well, I never feel that way. I'm telling you, folks, you need to get saved. You need to get saved. You come to church and the Word of God bothers you. I'm telling you, you might need to be saved. Or you might need to get right with God. Yeah. He hath attended to my voice. He's attended into my prayer. He says my voice has made his ears and he, he's done something about it. He heard me. Here's the proof he has seen the sincerity of my heart. The fact that I hate sin and truly desire to forsake it. My friends, there has to be a true desire to forsake all sin. Everybody says, does the Lord mind if I, if I keep a pet sin? You know, everybody has their pet sins. Does the Lord mind? I'll answer this in one word. With excitement. Yes! He minds. He tells us to forsake sin. Of course he minds. Well, I'm just holding on to one pet sin. That's like people that play with snakes. Oh, my goodness. If you have a snake at your house, don't call the preacher because he don't like snakes. <laughs> you might get a good whooping for me to get away from a snake. I don't like him. And I don't care if you're a little kid. I tell you, you come up with me on a snake, you might get hurt. I just let me know what hospital you're going to want to go to because you're going to the hospital. These people play, well, they're, they're pets. Snakes aren't pets. Man, they're not pets. Had a bus rider, uh, rider uh, Brother Mike and I was visiting out at Brookside. And, and Brother Mike, you remember this, and, and this young man is gave his life in the military. He's gone. His name is Clint. Well, his moms and pops liked those big old, what were they, uh, pythons? And I told him, I said, folks, I don't like snakes. They had that snake li li lying on the side of the car. You know what he's doing? He was sunning. He was sunning. I came out and that fellow, he still laughs about it. I see him, his daddy. He came out running, stop, stop. And I mean, I just went. He said, the snake's out. <laughs> Where? 
Look to your left. <gasps> Length of the car. I don't like snakes. You say, well, they'll never hurt you. Oh, I see stuff on all the time where a snake's sitting there playing with it and it bites people's faces and stuff or their hands. Now, you don't tell me that. Well, sin, my pet sin doesn't hurt anything. That's a bunch of hog fat. That's right. That is just a lie. It does. It has an effect or an effect on you. Right. It affects with your emotions. It, it has... It affects with your spiritual life, your walk with God. It causes you grief and pain with everybody that you have business with. No, it does have an effect on you. But he says, you know what? He didn't turn away my prayer. He says this. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Old Christians, what do you pray about? You know, he praised him for listening to his sincere prayer. He praised God for his mercy uh, that was extended to him. But Christians, what, what do you pray for? What do you pray for? We have grandkids know the faster they pray, the faster they get to eat. Lord, thank you for this macaroni and cheese that you have provided. Amen. Amen. We pray with them at night. We've had our grandkids Friday night. We had them all there except Berkeley. And uh, uh, I wish she could have come, but she, she wasn't able to be there. Get them all in there praying and everything. It's so cute and wonderful to hear a child pray to God and not pray in a hurry. Christians, what do you pray for? How long has it been? God put me in the right place at the right time so I can tell somebody about your greatness that you've been to me. How long has that been? How long has it been since you prayed, Lord, I need to lead somebody to you. Lead me to somebody. Lead me to somebody who needs to be saved. Let me be the one who presents the gospel to him. Lord, give me a soul. Like that old song, Lord, lead me too, some soul today, and love that soul through me. And may I always do my part to win that soul for thee. That's an old song. And I'm not even sure I sang it right, but it rhymes, so that's the way we're going with it. But I think that's the way it goes. How long's it been? That people looked at your life and said, I don't know, but they're happy and I am miserable. I want what they have. You know what they have or should have? Jesus in their heart. How long has it been? How long has it been since you've had such a close walk with God that you knew at any moment that you dropped your head in prayer, His ears were attentive to your prayers. Or did you have to spend the first four hours confessing because of sin in your life? People still need the Lord. And Christians are the ones who are to bring God's love to the lost and dying world. Amen. It's been so bitterly cold these last two weeks. That clear down. Clear down. I was talking to Brother Albright this week. He said, I went to go see Brother Sickmeyer. And it was like minus 17, regular temperature. The windshield was minus 42. Why are there people there? <laughs> Why are there people in those places? But you know what? These last two weeks, I don't know how many thousands of people died. Heard one, one baby, not baby, but child died in their own bed? Froze to death? Someone just told me that this morning. But you know what's sad? Many of the people that died these last two weeks went from a very cold place to an eternal place. Suffering heat. 
because they left this life without Jesus. Amen. Jesus is still the answer. Amen. For those of us who are saved, who saved? Really know Jesus Christ? He's still the answer. And for those outside of Jesus Christ, He's still the answer. Amen. Let's all stand with our head bowed and our eyes closed. We're going to open up the altars now. Maybe you're a Christian and you're not on fire for God like you should be. There's always something in the way. Always something in the way when it comes to church time. Always something in the way when it comes declaring time. Always something in the way. Maybe you need to step out and get these things taken care of. Maybe there's some things in your life that you've been hanging on to that you need to let go. Maybe some pet sin or sins. Maybe your life is not crystal clean like it should be. Give it to Jesus. Give it to the Father. Maybe you're here this morning and you're not saved. Maybe you're trying to make everybody believe that you are, but you're not. My friends, it doesn't make any difference what people believe. It's what God knows. Maybe you need to step out from where you're at and get saved today. Say, preacher, I, 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 can't, I can't get out. You start moving towards the aisle, you'll be surprised how fast that aisle will open up. This is a day, my friends. We're reminded of God's great mercy and love and our great responsibility as saved and also for those who are lost, the great responsibility of accepting Christ Jesus as Savior. Our Father, Lord God, I pray for this moment. Lord, I pray that He, the Holy Spirit, will challenge our hearts, that He'll convict us Lord, that we'll look into the depths of our soul and, and because it's, it's open unto you. Nothing hid. Lord, let us forsake those things. They're not pleasing to you. I pray that today, maybe even as I'm praying, that those that are lost without Jesus Christ that they'll maybe even slip out right now while every head's bowed. And as we pray, that they'll come to your altars, repent, and let Jesus be their Savior. We're thankful for your mercy and your love. Let us live our life that will be pleasing to you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.